Hi everyone. So we are about to start. In about a minute, we'll start. Um, I just was wondering. I forgot to ask Peter if you wanted to say uh, you're saying a few words about a score before we begin. Correct. Yes, I will. Awesome. We'll get started at the top of the hour. Perfect. Hello, everyone, and welcome to SCORE Fairfield County's webinar on managing stress and setting work boundaries for small business owners. I'm Peter Talian, the workshop coordinator and a business mentor here at SCORE Fairfield County and I'll be your host. Our speaker today is Yvonne Zucco. More on our speaker in just a moment. First, some brief information on SCORE. SCORE is a national organization with 230 offices, over 10,000 volunteers around the country. We are part of the Small Business Administration and work alongside with them. In Fairfield County, SCORE has over 100 volunteers, with a wide range of industry, process, and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary value-added services to small business owners. Number one, we provide free one-on-one -on -one counseling, face-to-face, -face, telephone, email, and video, which can be accessed via the request mentor link on our website or via the link on the screen. Educational in-person workshops and live webinars, about 100 a year, and very extensive resources on our website, including a network of subject matter experts at your disposal. Some useful information about today's event. If you have a question, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. We will take questions at the end uh, and take a look at the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Our workshop will end at 1 p.m. to respect your time. The session is being recorded and the link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within the next couple of days. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. Yvonne's mission is to support individuals and companies in their development efforts and help unlock the potential that everyone has within. As a people and culture consultant, she works with individuals searching for fulfillment and balance in their careers and with companies working towards intentional cultural change by using a pragmatic approach to help them advance from where they are to where they want to be with clarity and purpose. Now, my pleasure to turn it over to Yvonne. Yvonne, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Peter. And thank you, SCORE, again, for having me. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we had another uh, webinar and which I'm actually going to use a little bit as an introduction to what we are talking about today. But before we do that, I want our um, STEAM audience to participate with a very important question that I have for you, and you can enter your answers in the chat. Peter is going to um, read them for me. So the question is, what is your most significant challenge at maintaining work or entrepreneurship balance? whether it's within your business or with your um, own life. If you wanna share in the chat with us, what is your biggest challenge in maintaining that boundary, uh, that boundary and that balance? Um, while you get um, your responses seen, I um, just wanted to share with you that um, one of the things we talked about at the last um, workshop is the fact that uh, business owners have so much on their plate, right? They have so many things to do, they are, uh, kind of to do it all, especially in the beginning. So maintaining work boundaries are very, very difficult. And uh, on top of that, we, um, you know, have to balance the other things we want to do in life, like um, family, um, vacation, time off, time to relax, uh, time to be humans and do things that we enjoy as well. So hopefully this workshop is going to help you with setting up one or two intentions of things that you want to do when uh, it comes to managing boundaries for you and at the same time managing stress. So I see that we have a few answers, Peter. Yep, let me uh, give some of the highlights. We've got lots of active participants uh, on our chat, so thank you very much for participating. Um, 
couple highlights, allowing customers to interfere with self time, missing team missing the correct skill matrix, placing me to fill in the gaps. Other ones that have come in, allowing customers to interfere with self time. I work from home and I'm expected to always be available. Saying no to new opportunities. Workplace doesn't listen or care about balance. Not shutting off work, taking away from family time. So a very, very extensive range of, of issues that folks have. So I'll turn it back over to you, Yvonne. Thank you, Peter. It's so helpful that you can read this for me. Um, so yes, um, and one of the things that I want when I ask people questions of this kind is that they are, they know that they are not alone, that many people go through the same situations they are going through, and it's not unique. Um, and yes, there are many commonalities. One of them tend to be that when you are an entrepreneur or you have a small business, people reach out to you, you have to be, you feel like you have to be available right away because otherwise you will lose business, right? You don't want to lose that opportunity. Other things like employees not having the right skills and you having to supply those skills. Dividing time can be very challenging as well. Um, balancing personal life with um, also uh, what your business is, your passion is, can be very challenging. So hopefully we will be able to address a few things today and give you some good tips. Like I said before, just setting intentions to get it started. You don't have it to do it all at once. This video is going to be available for you if you wanna see it again, uh, but let's let's get it started. And my main point to start usually is around um, defining the biggest um, misperception that people have about life work and work balance. Um, and the biggest misperception is that life is separate from work. In reality, work is part of life. And attempting to separate it can create feelings of resentment. So um, we talk a little, a lot, we hear a lot you know, in, in the past world, like people talk about, um, oh, you know, how is your life work balance? But really, if you're doing what you love or what you have set up to do, this is part of your life. It's part of every day. So it's not so much uh, about separating them. It's about managing and having skills that can allow you, allow you to create boundaries and clarity um, so that you can have time for rest relaxation and play. So let's talk about burnout a little bit. Um, boundaries, what are good uh, work habits, and also um, how to create systems that will help you. One of the things I talked about uh, last time I presented was the fact that because you are, are a small business owner, you're probably on your own or you have a very small team. If you do, uh, the best way to make best use of your time is by creating a system that works for you. So we'll look at that, but let's start with burnout. So according to the World Health Organization, burnout is a syndrome that is um, comes from uh, chronic workplace stress. Uh, what is interesting is that this is not a um, medical condition. It is a, an idea that refers specifically to a phenomenon that happens um, occupationally. But this phenomenon translates into all the other pieces of our lives. So if we are stressed at work and we are suffering from work uh, burnout, what is going to happen is that you will have uh, feelings and you're going to um, feel in certain way that it's, not, it's going to affect your personal life as well. You will feel tired, you will feel stressed, you will feel cranky. Um, there will be distance between you and your job and the thing you love you will feel like this is affecting you all around. So burnout is something important to keep an eye on, whether you're working for somebody else or you're working for yourself. Uh, so anyone can suffer from burnout. Um, it's basically a cumulative sense of stress, fatigue, and dissatisfaction. And the situations that lead to burnout are, for example, a stressful work environment, lack of resources, um, excessive hours, too much work, highly demanding task, people always wanting something from you. Um, so keep an eye on it because um, it is important to uh, make sure that you are, you are managing your stress in some way in which doesn't end up killing your dream, which is having your own business. 
Um, when I talk about burnout, I like to talk about multitasking. So our current society has been talking for a long time about people multitasking, like it is a class. I think it's changing a little bit, but in general, when our society thinks about multitasking, this is what they present to you, right? It's kind of like, if you can do many things at the same time, you are absolutely brilliant and you are at your, at your most energy. Some people say, I work my best when I'm multitasking. But the reality is that multitasking really looks like the second picture we have here on the slide. Why? I'm going to give you a few myths and facts about multitasking. First of all, we tend to believe that being a multitasker uh, makes you more valuable and effective. But the truth is that human brains are not designed to multitask. Our brains um, do take about 0.3 uh, seconds to switch tasks. Um, we can do certain tasks that are automatic, like, for example, chewing and walking and thinking at the same time. But our brains are not designed to think about two things at the same time. So what happens when you are multitasking? Every time you change your task, your brain is becoming exhausted and you are losing precious time uh, from um, getting work done, work that is uh, deep and that is important. Uh, for example, if you have a day in which you're reading your email and all of a sudden you get interrupted by, the, by a chat, um, you move your attention to the chat. It takes you 0.3 seconds to go back to your email. Or if you become distracted by social media, you go to social media, it takes you 0.3 seconds to come back to what you were doing. If you add it up during the day, there are two things that happen. First, you realize that you have lost precious time in which you could have been doing some very, very deep, meaningful work. And also your brain becomes more tired. The other misconception is that technology help us uh, to be more effective, uh, to do things more effectively. But the truth is that email and electronic communication, including social media, are making people miserable. Uh, you know, I personally feel very strongly about it because I know that um, people are being very affected. Our children are being affected by um, our use of electronics in whichever way they are using it. And so in our brains are becoming uh, less um, focused. We are um, used to having this mental switch and we cannot stay focused for a long time on something. That's why, you know, social media tells you make videos because people can't concentrate, people can't read anymore because we don't have that focus anymore. We have lost it thanks to uh, technology. Um, the other myth is that being respons responsive demonstrate that you are productive. Um, in the case of your uh, customers, right? If they are, um, if you if you're being responsive, it means you are on top of the game. But Separating time to do deep work is super essential and is essential for our productivity and well-being as, a, as people. Uh, for example, things that people can do is use the Pomodoro technique. Many, of pe many people are familiar uh, with it. Uh, if you're not familiar, I think you should look it up. Um, it's basically setting time aside to do the work without interruptions. Mm, so... I believe, and you know, I have a proof throughout my work with people, is that in order to find balance, uh, you have to have two things, these two habits that are essential. The first one uh, is to pursue internal and external clarity. And I'll talk more about that. The second one is to be able to set boundaries and learn how to manage internal and external expectations. I'm going to repeat this several times throughout this workshop. I think that people are absolutely okay if you don't get back to them right away. They just need to know that you are not gonna be able to get back to them right away. Um, so uh, when we put on ourselves that pressure of having to interrupt what we're doing, because we believe that this person is kind of uh, needing us to respond right away, what we're doing is creating a difficult situation for ourselves but if we had uh, clarity around when we can respond people, people would be okay with taking that. So 
Self-regulation is really key in this case. And what is self-regulation? Self-regulation is the ability to basically manage your behavior and your reactions uh, to feelings that are happening around you. So self-regulation looks like becoming calm when you are stressed, um, uh, learning how to manage frustration, excitement, embarrassment, how to set up time for ourselves to calm down when something is happening, whether it's something really good or something really bad. So um, I'll be talking a lot about self-regulation as well. So why is self-regulation difficult? The first thing is that humans are wired to be social creatures. Um, there are social networks encoded in our uh, neurons. And these social networks are linked to pain systems in our body. That's why we need so much approval and we need to belong to groups, to family, to a culture. It is very important. And when we don't get that, we feel isolated from groups. And that makes us feel pain, like physical pain in our bodies. So this social adaptation has allowed humans to be the most successful species in the planet. And when I'm saying successful, what I'm referring to is saying, um, you know, basically we are able to accomplish what we set our minds to um, with better places to live, maybe better electronic devices, better cars, things like that. I'm not saying that we are super successful at interacting with nature and making sure that the rest of the planet is, um, you know, uh, finding balance as well. But when it comes to the culture of humanity, we have been successful because we are wired to be social creatures. So in the same way that, for example, we feel, um, you know, uh, a feeling in our stomach when we need to get food, our instinct to be um, accepted and be part of a group um, can be affected um, by when we don't have those social interactions. And that's why we feel that we have to be responding all the time. So let's start with personal clarity. What does it look like? Here are some tips. First of all, try to wake up every day around the same time and set up a morning routine that allows you to awaken gently. What does that mean? Take time in the morning to center. I'm not saying meditate. I'm not saying exercise. I'm not giving you any specific thing that you should be doing, although many of them are um, very good uh, things to do. What I'm saying is that in the morning, when you wake up, take at least 30 minutes to do something that allows your brain to um, get adjusted to being awake. Now, uh, one thing I want to clarify, I know that as a business owner, you may have a different work schedule. So instead of saying in the morning, I should be saying um, when you wake up, yeah? If you are a, for example, if you are a restaurant owner, your time to wake up in the morning may be very different um, to other people. But when you wake up, make sure that you stay away from your phone at least 30 minutes. If you wake up and the first thing that you do is look at your phone to catch up with the emails or the message that you sent last night, what is going to happen is that your brain is going to go on in on alert and it's going to start stressing and thinking about what needs to be done and you will not have that time to um, adjust to being awake. Uh, this increases stress. This increases burnout. Um, it's difficult. I know many of us do it. I do it sometimes. Um, I shouldn't be doing it. Uh, also, an important thing to do as a system or um, as something uh, to get used to is set a time to start your day every day if you can um, and try to stay away from doing work uh, before you set up your time. So let's say, for example, I decide I'm going to wake up. Oh, I'll tell you my routine. I wake up every day at 5.30 in the morning. And so it takes me a little bit to get awake. Uh, so by 6, I'm kind of coming to my senses. I shower, take care of myself. And then I set up myself to start working and just opening my computer at 7. I want to get it started early. But before 5.30 and 7, I do not do any work. Why is that important? Because, again, you need this transition 
between being um, just awake and moving into uh, your work day. Uh, your body does need it. Your stress levels will go down if you follow that routine. Um, another thing that I do all the time and that is very beneficial is to create a ritual to begin your work day. Personally, I go through my to-do list. So my work day starts even with a piece of paper, which brings a little bit of balance be between not looking at a screen all the time. For me personally, if you want your to-do list to be electronic or whatever it is it that you decide, make it a routine so that you feel that your work day is starting and balanced every morning. Um, boundaries. So we talk about boundaries with others, but boundaries without for yourself are important as well. So here are a few tips that um, could work for you. First of all, separate time to do focus work in your calendar and stick to it. Whether it is um, that you need to make a cake or you are providing service uh, for a client, uh, stay away from multitasking and doing many things at the same time same time. Let's say you are uh, making cakes and you have to make a cake for a, uh, a wedding. Use all your time that you have separated to make that cake and don't be paying attention to your phone or your messages. You will enjoy the task and then at the same time you will be able to uh, give a fine product that has had all of your attention. Um, set a work schedule in advance and if you have the ability even set up your vacation time in advance as well. Take a look at a calendar and say, okay, I think by this time of the year, my business is going to be a little bit slower, so maybe I can take three or four days of work. Uh, personally, I am not able to take long vacations right now. So what I do is I look at my calendar in advance and take a look at the long weekends with a Monday off. Fortunately, my job is kind of an nine to five job most of the time. I do uh, workshops in the evening, but it tends to be a weekday kind of job. So I take a look and I say, okay, from this Friday until that Monday, I'm going to take these four days to myself and I'm not going to schedule anything for it. So when I give out uh, my time that I'm available to do workshops, I already know in advance that this is time I'm not going to be using or offering uh, because I have it set it up in advance. Another thing uh, that you can do if you want to take it up a notch um, and use your calendar, <laughs> you can uh, separate time in your calendar to ensure that you will have enough time to rest and play allocated. When I just started my business, I was mixing my uh, job with a part-time job as well because I needed the extra income, right? So I still need it, but uh, you know, I'm managing it a little bit better. So I created a very, very detailed calendar what I was going to do, what time I was going to wake up, what time I was going to exercise, what time, from what time I was to what time I was going to get ready. And I even I separated the time that it takes me to commute for, for work. Why did I do this? Because one of the hardest things for us to manage is having to make decisions every day. Making decisions takes away from our concentration on what we're doing. So if you have a design, some sort of a calendar for you for your week, what your ideal week will look like, at least you won't have to worry about um, deciding what to do next. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, doesn't have to be uh, every day the same. But if you set up your mind to really block times in which you are going to do be doing one thing uh, over another, uh, you know, you will have to take those decisions. You will take those decisions away. Uh, for example, in this calendar, I have a time to pay my bills, my home bills, and really like straighten up my own finances. I have a time on Sunday to go to the grocery store. I just, I don't have to think of when am I going to go to the grocery store. I know on Sunday at 10 a.m. I'm going to head to the grocery store. And all my yellows there, as you can see, are the times that I decided I'm going to use to relax, to have dinner, to be with my family, to see my friends. It's big blocks and it may work for different people differently, especially if you have to work on the weekend, but you can make it work for yourself. Um, other things around boundaries for yourself. And here's the big news. The biggest challenge to maintaining the boundaries is you. 
self-regulation plays a key important role in this in this case. There is no calendar that is going to tell you, uh, okay, now it's time to stop working and you're gonna like automatically stop working. This is a decision that you are going to make every time. So it doesn't matter how much time you set aside in the calendar and so on. If you don't have that self-regulation for yourself and you kind of work with you and the, um, you know, the necessity of being always on the go, um, no other tool is going to help you. So that's you. You are the most important person here. Also, uh, other things that you can do is to decide in advance what time you're going to end work and also have an end of the day routine. I usually end also with taking a look at my calendar for the rest of the week and also with my to-do list and see, you know, how many things I was able to accomplish during the day. Uh, one thing that I have done that works really well for me is I did set an alarm on my on my phone to remind me that I need to stop working certain time during the day. And I have self-disciplined myself to walk away from my desk and go and do something else, like cooking or whatever I have decided I'm going to do in that in that evening. Uh, my husband makes a lot of fun of me because I even have an alarm that says um, at 7.30 p.m., no more screen time. That reminds me that I'm not going to open my computer after that time. Absolutely no, because I understand that the blue light in the computer or in my phone uh, is going to affect the way I sleep, which is sleep is very important. Uh, when you work on your to-do list, you can divide them into micro and macro lists. So macro lists are the things that you have to do, like the bigger project, and the micro are all the details that uh, go under that list. So for example, let's say I have to prepare a workshop that I need to present. I know this is the bigger picture, right? But then I have to do, so the macro is prepare the workshop by this day, but then I have to do micro things like do research, look for my um, uh, sources, um, prepare the PowerPoint, um, rehearse the PowerPoint, and so on. Make sure my Zoom is working. All those things are the micro things that you have to do inside the macro list. And it's very useful to divide them that way so it doesn't result so overwhelming. Uh, another thing uh, that is a really good habit to have is to separate time to uh, return emails and um, resist the urge of answering every single thing as they come. Um, sometimes you may be part of chain emails, right? Many people are emailing each other and somebody did something that was good and everybody feels like they have to cheer. Taking a look at that takes a lot from your from your from your day. So you can use uh, things like a like button, uh, a smiley face. Um, most of our email systems now have a way to communicate that you are aware and you have read and that you like what's going on, but not necessarily have to write an email um, right after, you know, everybody's commenting. And another important habit to keep is just to allow yourself for 15 to 30 minute buffer in between meetings. Uh, we tend in our society for, to move from meeting to meeting. Uh, if you have that case um, while you're managing your work, um, you need to have time to take notes, to reset, to think about what you're doing next. So by the end of the day, you don't feel overwhelmed with a long list of, of things to do that you never got to even write down or put somewhere because you were moving from meeting to meeting. So once you have your own clarity, then you can have clarity and boundary for, boundaries for others. Let me repeat this. If you don't have clarity for yourself, you hardly are going to be able to build boundaries for other people. So what kind of things can you do to establish your boundaries and say no sometimes, right? First, you can be sure that you are clear and consistent about the times you are available to work. In that case, for example, automatic replies can be a great help. Putting in your email signature, I'm available between this time and this time can be very helpful. Using your voicemail and leaving you know, a, a, a recorded a answer that says, I'm available between these times and these times and I will get back to you as soon as possible. All of these tools, all of these venues and uh, channels that you have for communicating must match so people are clear 
once you start kind of like training your customers that you will not be available on Sundays, they will stop calling you on Sundays. And if they call you, they will apologize saying, no, I'm so sorry, I'm leaving you a message, but at least you will know that they get it. But if you don't give them the clarity, hardly they will have clarity about how to communicate with you. Other things that you can do, especially if you have a team, but you can use it to communicate with vendors and customers as well, is give them guidelines on how to communicate with you. For example, you can use guidelines like, if you need to communicate with me, but you can give me like two days to get back to you, send me an email, right? If you need feedback during the workday, um, let's use team chat or Slack or whatever other kind of communication you are using with your with your um, with your customers, your vendors, and your team. If somebody needs an answer real quick, let's say within two hours, they can send you a text. If they need to communicate with you immediately, to give you a call. If you have these guidelines for people, um, then you'll know how urgent it is for them. Uh, for, uh, that you get back to them. That way you will have your own boundaries for yourself and you will have boundaries for them as well. So the channels you choose are totally up to you, but you need to express your boundaries. If you don't tell people what your boundaries are, people will, know, will not know how to respect your boundaries. Other things that people have answered for other workshops have been, and these are suggestions from participants in other workshops. Um, they have said, eliminate sound alerts on your phone when you're, when you're doing deep work. Dele delete applications that take your attention. Uh, do not look at emails before you work out. So if you're gonna work out, use the same rule than before going to bed or when you wake up, right? Because you can, that you would take time for yourself and it's true time for yourself as opposed to like, oh, yes, I'm working out, but I'm thinking about all these things that I have to do. Um, you can use codes in your emails and um, subjects to address the importance of the email. If people need to kind of like get back to you right away or if you can wait, you can put it in the subject of the email. It's a very useful thing to do. Also unsubscribe for e from email lists. Um, yeah, you go to the store, or every time you go to the store, they ask you for your email address. Um, unsubscribe unless you, know, you wanna keep an eye on coupons and things like that. Um, the other things are just keeping your attention. Um, rest time is very important. I have a specific slide about that. Um, and in, in, in other words, you know, um, burnout doesn't come from doing too much, uh, but trying to give what you don't have. Another tip I had in here, I, I think I, I, I kind of uh, um, skipped it somewhere, but there was a, a tip about uh, making sure that in your to-do list, you have the most pretty important items that you have to cover. And, um, you know, kind of don't worry so much about the other things, because if you look at your to-do list, you, you know that you are not going to be able to accomplish the other things. So in the morning when you set up or the night before, look for the three most important things that you need to accomplish that day. If you are able to accomplish that, you will feel a better uh, way uh, of feeling satisfaction about your work and that you actually did uh, the thing that you needed to do that day. Many times we go about your day and we feel like we did nothing. We were full of interruptions. People, um, you know, kept, kept us distracted from where we needed to be. Uh, so if we at least can accomplish those three most important things in that day, at least you will feel a sense of accomplishment as, and as a um, consequence, you will have uh, less stress and you will feel better about what you're doing. So I want to talk a little bit about self-care, uh, but not in the sense of, you know, self-care is to do these things to take care of yourself. But I want to talk about the importance of self-care and what are the means of self-care. So one of the things I always talk to my participants about is that in life, we are the only, the only power we have is the power to change ourselves. So, um, you know, there may be systems that may not be working. Maybe, you know, uh, the people that I'm working with are not necessarily um, getting back to me in the way I need to. Um, the town that I'm doing business with is not being responsive. All of those things that are external to us are very difficult to change. 
The only power we have is to change ourselves. So working on ourselves and getting to know ourselves well is super, super important. By the way, I have a whole separate um, presentation on self-care because it can be such an expensive uh, kind of uh, thing. But I'll, I'm going to highlight the things that I think are, are more important around self-care. Uh, let's talk about myths first. The first myth about self-care is that it's something selfish, that we don't deserve to care for ourselves. Not true. Uh, that self-care is just for women. That, you know, there is this thing about, well, it wasn't started as a movement for women well, and with the women rights, but it has transformed over time to include all human beings. We all need time to relax and rest and recharge. Um, also, there is the misconception that self-care is doing anything that suits you. Um, yes, there are things that are good for you and there are things that relax you, but are not necessarily good for you, right? For example, having a drink every night so you can fall asleep. I'm not against drinking. I love my glass of wine and, uh, you know, and I use it, but I don't use it to relax. I use it to enjoy a meal with it and so on. If you are using um, self-medication or uh, the use of alcohol as a coping mechanism for your stress, uh, that's something that you should be looking at. So not everything that calms you down means that it's going to be self-care. Uh, the other thing that we tend to think is that we need to earn the uh, the right to practice self-care. Um, the self-care uh, uh, requires resources that we don't have, like for example, getting a massage and things like that. No, that is not self-care at all. That could be a practice that can help you with self-care, but it's not necessarily self-care. Um, that the effects of self-care are temporary, that is not true. You build with self-care, you build that resiliency over time. Um, that self-care takes too much time. In fact, taking care of yourself can take five minutes a day. Uh, the self-care is optional. It's not optional. You need it. And last but not least, that self-care is the same for everyone. No, that's also a misconception. Self-care can be so different for two different individuals. So one of the things that I usually talk about um, is keep in mind what your body and your mind is ingesting. How do you take care of yourself, right? Are you turning on the news and being so stressed about what's happening, about the division in politics, about how people can get it together, about how there is, you know, um, so much conflict in the world happening right now? It is important to be aware of what's happening. But turning on the news and hearing over and over and over again what is going on is not going to make you feel better, right? Same thing. Do you like to watch some TV shows to relax you? Are you watching all the time like um, crime uh, shows, right? Do they make you feel good? Listen, I love my crime shows, but sometimes I have to watch some shows that make me feel good, that just make me happy. They may be silly, funny, I don't know, but you have to have a combination. You have to be careful with what your mind is consuming and then what your body is ingesting. So nourishment is super important. In my calendar, I have an alarm that tells me to stop and have lunch. Because if I don't stop and have lunch, then I deplete my own energy. But when I'm into the groove and I'm doing work that is meaningful to me, it is very difficult to stop myself. But nourishment is not so necessary for your body. The same as exercising. I'm not a big exercise person. But, you know, keeping active, standing up, moving around, it is important. One of the things about being a business owner, if you are not there, nobody's going to be earning the income, right? Nobody's paying you for sick days. You need to take care of your body and your mind. Uh, the one that I want to address specifically is rest. Um, people do not usually talk about rest. Uh, and I think it's, it's, it's just really, really important so that you can recharge. So a few things that you can do to be sure that you have enough rest. For example, turn off an electronic device at least one hour before going to bed. Well, you don't have to turn them off. You just don't look at them. It will affect your quality of sleep. Um, stick to a sleeping schedule. That's the best thing that you can do for yourself. If you can, try to stick to a sleeping schedule. Um, avoid exercising before going to bed. 
I've heard from many people that exercising make, make them tired. It may be the case, uh, but most of the time when you exercise, you get a burst, a burst of energy, which is, makes it very difficult for you uh, to fall asleep. Like for example, I uh, on Wednesdays, I take a dance class on that uh, goes until 9 p.m. That night, I cannot go to sleep at 10. It's just very, very difficult for my body to come out of the high and just kind of like uh, get the rest that it needs. Um, avoid caffeine and nicotine and also alcohol before going to bed. I know alcohol again, and I'm not obsessed with this. I just want to let you know that it feels like it relaxes you, but it gives you a very bad night of sleep because you become dehydrated and the sugars go through up, up and down phases so you don't get to sleep well. Avoid large meals as well uh, late at night. Uh, it will make you feel good in your tummy, but it will not uh, help your body sleep well. Uh, don't take naps after 3 p.m. Uh, taking a half bath may help before going to bed. Uh, and make sure that you your room or wherever it is that you sleep, whether it's your couch, wherever it is that you sleep, is some sort of a sanctuary that uh, helps you feel that um, you have a routine before you go to bed. Uh, one more tip. If you cannot sleep at night because you have too much on your mind, do not stay in bed. Get up, do something that relaxes you. I usually take a shower because the warm water helps me relax. Uh, read a little bit and then try to go back to sleep. But staying in bed at night when you are not able to sleep just makes matters worse. So that's kind of um, a few tips for you. Uh, I'm looking forward to answering some questions. Um, I have some book recommendations before we go, and I'll tell you about them. The first one is uh, it, it's different kind of books, but I think that there is one for everybody here. Uh, the first one is called The Power of Now, and this book is a lot about spirituality and it has to do a lot with you know the benefits of meditation and so on but what the book does is really get across the point of how important it is to be present in the moment uh, especially the first part of the book the last part may be a little bit harder to digest but the first part of the book does talk about how important it is that you're present and that you are there when you need to do things and you stop like doing many things at the same time because your mind will go in an automatic mode. Deep work uh, goes along those lines as well, but deep work is not uh, spiritual at all. It's a book about um, just making sure you separate time to do the deep work and meaningful work that makes you feel good and that you feel like you have accomplished things. Atomic Habits um, is a great book. It's one of my favorite books on habits because it teaches you about how to build habits little by little. Um, we tend to think that, you know, okay, I'm going to create this whole routine and it's going to work and my life is going to be so different. It doesn't happen like that. When you are building your habits, and if you want to consider any of the tips that we had in the beginning, what you have to do is to start testing and trying little by little, as opposed to doing everything at once. It will make you feel some sort of accomplishment and it will help you kind of like uh, build that muscle. And the last one is Your Brain at Work. This is a wonderful book. It is about how your brain oscillates throughout the day and how you can learn um, where to put your work that needs more concentration during the times your brain is more active. It's great because it gives you examples of real life and what happens to people, but you also can start like keeping a journal and analyzing when your brain is at its best when do you have the more energy and when, uh, what kind of tasks you can have for when you don't do um, so, uh, so, much, so much work, uh, when, you don't, when your brain is not uh, really at the most active or prime time. Uh, so that's kind of the recommendations I have for books. If you want to contact me uh, and ask more questions, you are welcome to. I'm very easy to find. You just have to type my name on the internet. I have kind of like a unique combination of names. So um, just type my name and my uh, information is going to come up uh, right away. And I think um, we are ready for going into uh, Q&A. Uh, I will welcome uh, your questions at this moment and uh, hopefully I can address them uh, 
and hope you all. Well, thank you very, very much, Yvonne, for the very dynamic presentation with lots of concrete examples and lots of content. Uh, we've got about 15 minutes to take your questions. Uh, I would ask our listeners to use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen, and we'll take one question after another. Uh, let me start off with a couple of questions that came in earlier, Yvonne. Uh, can you talk about uh, the impact of artificial intelligence on stress levels with all the talk and communication on AI? Um, how do you and your clients uh, talk about that, think about that, and kind of put that into perspective for us? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Artificial intelligence can be very, very useful and can save you a lot of time, right? If you have tried some of the apps that create things for you. Um, at first, I was insulted. I write uh, some articles and I was like, oh my God, somebody's going to take over what I love the most, which is writing articles. Uh, but it's not quite like that. So you are able to um, you make good use of artificial intelligence. Um, and then, you know, when you think about... Um, what impact is going to have in our future as a society and also as business owners, um, let me tell you that no artificial intelligence will ever replace human touch. I'm a big believer in that. And it comes to reinforce that uh, notion of we are uh, uh, animals that need to connect with one another. So artificial intelligence can be practical at times, Yet at the same time, no going, nobody's going to change the way, um, you know, uh, human interaction uh, are important. In my case, for example, in my own business, I work with uh, companies and no artificial intelligence will write um, an article that can replace me working with people one-on-one, -on -one, responding to their needs and answering their questions and helping guiding them to where they want to be. Um, so I, I'm not too, too scared of it. It all depends on the kind of business you're in. Uh, but, you know, the human touch is so important. That's why networking and meeting people is just kind of an essential piece of being um, a business owner, which actually networking is uh, my next, uh, I'm going to do a little commercial networking is my next workshop first course. So we can talk about that. Very good. Um, you had mentioned during your presentation about using codes on email subjects. Uh, can you provide some examples in a little bit more detail about categorizing your email, using codes, and so on and so forth? Yes, sure. So you can um, divide uh, those codes into different things. For example, you can uh, think about it as, as a matter of urgency, right? Uh, so you can uh, use codes like your immediate attention is required. And when I say codes, I don't mean to use initials for things that can be confusing. Not everybody uh, kind of uh, understands what they mean. So acronyms are just something we are used to using, but not everybody gets it. So make it easy for people. So you can say things, for example, for your immediate attention, please read, um, no need to respond until Monday, like Friday. I was a little late with an email and I sent, you know, in the subject, you do not need to respond until Monday. So people know about it. Um, so this is more when you are communicating to other people. Um, you can also use things like, um, you know, uh, requesting a meeting. You can be very specific about what you're saying. And when you write your email, you can put a mini subject line inside the email that goes straight to the point so people know what you're talking about and then put the main information of what you want to say on the bottom. Like I said, most people today have a um, difficult time concentrating. So the easier you make it for uh, your customers, your vendors, the better shape you are in. Uh, but if you Google like different codes that you can use, there is like all over the internet, um, some good uh, suggestions of things that you can use. Um, but in reality, it's all around urgency and um, you know how quickly you need people to respond to you or, or get back to you or uh, you know what your availability is. The the whole thing about being available is better on an auto response email. Very good. Our next question has to do uh, with what would you advise a person? What are the first three things you would advise a person who says, I am burnt out? So if um, a client of yours comes to you or somebody that you work with comes to you and starts the conversation with saying, I'm burned out, um, mm -hmm. can you just walk us through the, the, the first three things you ask them or talk to them about? 
Yes. Um, so one of the things that I usually uh, address with people, and we do, do do this through coaching sessions. So I tend to have at least three different occasions in which I can speak with people um, in this coaching, but we address um, a few things. First of all uh, is habits. What kind of habits do you have um, that are helping you and what kind of habits um, are currently keeping you from feeling, uh, you know, that you are it being able to manage how much is coming to you. Um, but before I go into habits, I really like to work with people on their beliefs. Um, and that's longer work because it takes a while to discover that. So we talk about, you know, what is it that, um, what are the beliefs that you hold that are being useful for you at this moment? And what are the beliefs that you hold that are not helping you? I I'll give you an example to be more clear. If I believe that people the only way I can get across people, my value as a business owner is by answering back at them and saying yes to everything. What is going to happen is that that belief is going to um, dictate the way I behave uh, with my business and the way that I work with people. Um, this is difficult because our mind is completely talking to us all the time. So you believe like, oh my God, I didn't get back to this person. They're going to be mad at me. They're going to think I'm unprofessional. And it keeps building on that. So what is a more useful belief to have? It's like my clients appreciate me for what I am and they understand that I will keep be professional and get back to them as soon as I'm able to, right? Or my clients know that in order for me to give them a good answer or really get back to them in a way that I have thought about, I need some time for thinking. So uh, here again, we go into what it, how important it is the human connection there, right? With the people that you are working. So yes, addressing really your habits and the beliefs that underline those habits is very important when you want to manage burnout. Um, of course, when you are in a burnout situation, you feel like there's nothing I can do at this moment. You are completely overwhelmed. So in that case, I would suggest people that are suffering to burn out just to find um, professional help, even if it is for a little bit, so that they can talk about what's happening and they can feel empowered that they can change the situation that is happening. You always have the choice. Even if you have a job that is making you burn out and the ultimate decision is to change job, you have the power to make that decision. So either look for professional help um, if you want to look for a psychologist, I recommend psychologists that do uh, cognitive psychology because they are very um, to the point regarding what are the steps that you can take to make that change in your life. A coach can help you too. Okay, let's do mm -hmm. one, more, one more question. Um, many of the examples you talked about, you talked about your own business and how you handled stress and how you organized and dealt with the different pressures. Can you talk a little bit about family businesses where there's many uh, or several members of a family in one business, they work together, husbands and wives work together, or parents work with children. If you could talk to the audience in terms of managing stress, managing relationships on family enterprises, where there's several family members that are actively interacting with each other every day. Yes, uh, that's a great question, actually, and I'll, I'll be happy to address it. Um, working with family members or friends have an additional uh, level of complexity. Uh, the reason why they are so complex is because these people have known you throughout your life and they have an idea of who you are and how you act. And changing those um, dynamics can be very difficult. I, um, I, have, I, I have had two businesses in my life. My first business was with my husband, my first husband, my ex-husband. As you could tell, that didn't work out so well because we were we were very young when we had the business and we weren't very good about managing boundaries that had to do uh, with work. So in very little time, our worries about the business became our life. And personally, we wouldn't talk at home about anything else but the business. And we would wake up in the morning and go to sleep at night speaking about the business. And that was our main worry, the business, well, and the baby we had at the time. So our lives changed so much because we weren't careful with that, because we were managing our own internal boundaries. 
course, we were young. We didn't know, you know. And I, at the time, I had personally a score um, mentor. So that, that helped me a lot. Uh, but really, um, you have to set up not only the boundaries with the people that you, you're selling to, also the boundaries with the people that you work with. Uh, and so not like I want to do another commercial, but we are going to be talking about communication at work um, in two more sessions. I will be uh, teaching uh, about what kind of communication strategies you can use. But as an announcer right now, with the time we have available, because this can be such a complex um, issue, I will say the same way you start working and set it up, setting out boundaries with people on the outside, it is important to set up boundaries for pe with people that you are working on the inside. Um, and believe me, all of your family members and friends are going to need to have um, that boundary for themselves as well. So if you can help guiding them and you can help having conversations about when is the right time for us to speak about work and when is not the right time for us to speak about work because we all have a, the need for a break, um, you are off to a good start. Like any good habit, just deal with it little by little. Don't think that things are going to change from one day to the other. Thank you very much, Yvonne, uh, for answering the questions. Uh, I remind our audience that Yvonne will be doing other seminars in February. So take a look at the SCORE website uh, or at her website to get the additional information you need for those upcoming uh, webinars that are going to be offered with additional topics that she specializes in. Um, so I'd like to thank you very much, Yvonne, for your time this afternoon. As a reminder, a recording of this webinar and any materials will be available within a couple of days on fairfieldcounty.score.org. Please check out our website for additional information on all of our uh, webinars, and we offer many webinars each and every month. Finally, SCORE offers free individual counseling, so please use the link on the screen or on our website and click Request a Mentor. We are available for sessions via phone, email, or video. Finally, there will be evaluations that will be sent to you at the end of this webinar, and we really use your feedback in our planning and how we uh, put our content together. So please take a moment to answer um, the questionnaire that you will be getting. In closing, a very big thank you to you, Yvonne, and I wish all of our uh, participants a great day. That concludes our webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.